So now we have an online talk. Mario Fernandez, uh, so, uh, the first solar burst detection system applied to unlabeled Yacastillo data. So please let's start. Okay, uh, hello everyone, everyone there and online. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, so I will share my screen now. Uh, okay. Yes. Mm, well, so welcome to, to my presentation, which is about the, the application of the the ARCE method for solar burst detection uh, applied to ICALISTO data uh, in which no reports are uh, stating uh, the, the reports there. Mm. So I will start with an introduction uh, to give uh, some context uh, about the solar burst and the ICALISTO network. Uh, after that, I will provide some explanation about uh, our method for solar burst detection. Then I will show the results and we will end with some conclusions. Okay. First, we start with the context on, on solar radio burst. Uh, they are, well, giant explosion on the surface of the sun and manifest a sudden, fast and intense uh, radio wave uh, variation. Um, right now, they are happening like every many every week. Um, well, these are uh, quite diverse, actually, as you can see in the in the figure. Uh, there are um, many different types, and also there are many different phenomena that uh, can be quite tricky to differentiate, but are caused by uh, by well artificial noise. Um, and one, uh, also uh, monitoring uh, solar burst is important. First is uh, a key tool for space uh, weather prediction. Also uh, solar burst episodes uh, can cause uh, disturbances in electric power lines, satellite communication, GPS location. And well, right now we are quite uh, reliant on this, so it's important. And also uh, is key for solar research for, for understand, uh, for understanding our sun, so it's important. Yeah. Okay, uh, now I will introduce uh, for you the ICALISTO network of radio spectrometers in case uh, some of you don't know it. Uh, as you can see in, in this figure, in this map, uh, there are ICALISTO instruments all over the world uh, in both hemisphere, uh, north, uh, south, west, and east. And well, the strengths of this um, of this network of this network is uh, the low cost of the instrument, which allows for well this uh, number of uh, stations all over the world, and we can use it uh, the redundancy of a station for cross validation. And also, I want to mention that my work is part of the Celestina project, which is the Spanish participation in, in ICALISTO by the universities of Alcalá and Murcia. So now I want to explain the, the problem. So again, uh, I need uh, some context. Uh, ICALISTO currently uh, issues a, a monthly report listing the, the solar radio burst. But this now is a it's a manual task, which obviously is very time consuming and, and tedious. Uh, here in the figure, we can see an extract of uh, an example of one of these uh, reports. So the problem we can say we can summarize is the transition <laughs> from manual reports or manual detection to uh, automatic. Uh, so yeah, the goal in specifically in for this presentation, uh, it's pretty easy to understand. We have ICALISTO da data, I think before year uh, 2000, but there's a gap between 2012 and 2019 uh, where we don't have uh, 
burst reports. We don't have a list. So the goal is to fill uh, this gap with automatically uh, generated report. And how we want to do this, we want to do this uh, using the, the ARCE met method. Uh, is already uh, accepted this month in the, in the solar physics journal. And it's a burst detection method based on convolutional neural networks. So now I will start explaining uh, this method. Uh, first is the pre-processing. In the top left, uh, in the top left image, we can see uh, how the the raw data looks like. These are uh, 15 minutes uh, feeds file updated by Igalisto Station uh, daily uh, to the central servers. Uh, and the, in, on the x-axis, uh, there's the time in seconds and the frequency in megahertz in the, on the uh, y-axis. The color code uh, represents the intensity of the signal. Uh, after that, we, we perform a background subtraction, uh, the regular and often used background subtraction, in which we subtract the, the, the average intensity of, the, of every column. And uh, after all, you can see that the image is a lot more clear cut and we can see the shapes a lot better. And the last step is to perform uh, crops uh, both vertically and horizontally. Vertically, we just remove the, a bit of the top part and the bottom part in case uh, there's no important information there and or for example there's some pathological always uh, noise there so we can remove that parts and horizontally we perform a, a division in uh, 15 parts uh, so the event in each individual image is a lot more uh, perceptible so you can see the results uh, there in the top uh, figure uh, mm, and well, uh, each of these uh, 15 images is saved as, uh, as a PNG file of dimension uh, 256 times 256, which is the input data for the later uh, training in the, in the convolutional neural network. Okay, now we have here the training scheme. Uh, so we use uh, this uh, as input data, these uh, 15 uh, frames, we call it uh, PNG files, this here. Uh, then uh, through visual inspection and through try and mistake also, uh, we collect images to, to build a training data set. It contains a uh, yes yeah, and nay, so a folder with uh, images uh, with bursts and other uh, that are uh, clear numbers there. So, uh, well, previously in the solar physics uh, uh, paper, uh, we used uh, as framework uh, digits and the convolutional neural network use was AlexNet, but we have moved to what we call the ARCE 2.0 uh, to using uh, PyTorch and DenseNet DenseNet one to one uh, because, well, I will explain later in the, in the right part, but because uh, we have improved with this chain. So, uh, we, we, sorry. So, okay, uh, this yield a, a classification model, and then we, we do a performance evaluation. If the, if the, evaluation is okay with us, we are happy with the results, uh, we then use it to for, we use it on a target database. In case the results are still not good, uh, we have to either build a, a new data set or adding and removing some images or changing some of the parameters in the convolutional neural network. So the similarities between the ARCE and this uh, current, the ARCE 2.0 are the same pre-processing, this pre-processing, uh, the same training data set, 
and uh, the output format. But the novelties are we now use uh, DenseNet as a convolutional neural network, which is a much modern uh, uh, convolutional neural network. Also, we had a problem with digital deprecation, uh, and now using PyTorch, we can use uh, modern GPUs. And we are also, also been building uh, our own uh, data center, so it's important for us. Mario, please pay attention. You have five minutes left. OK. And uh, finally, uh, the, we have a better overall performance, so there's no reason not to change. Uh, well, you, you can see here the how is the model output. We had for every image the probability of burst. As you can see, the the model us, is usually very determined. No, no 50% there. There are some, but it's usually very determined. And well, actually, in this presentation, we we will always focus on the year 2014 uh, due to time constraints. And the reason why this year, well, it's obvious, is the where the there were uh, more uh, bursts in total. So now I want to talk about the parameter for report. Uh, first, we have the threshold. Uh, so a positive is given to a station if the probability of bursts uh, shown in the output is greater than this th value. Also, we use a minimum of matches case. So a solar event is only considered if k station out of the total station are positive in this given time. And well, these uh, two parameters are strongly related, so we need to find an optimal combination. And also, we have the lapse parameter. Uh, we group together uh, two or more solar events if they happen in between a five minute window. This five minute value has been decided uh, while well, asking uh, experts in this matter. So now we will we go to the results. First, I want to explain the criteria, the criteria for, the, for the choice of station. And as you can see here, uh, well, uh, most of the bursts are actually in the 20 to 200 uh, megahertz. So then we use uh, essentially, we, you can see here, a station in the 20 to 80 megahertz because is uh, well where the, the bursts are used. And we, um, we only use one uh, in Belgium uh, in the 45 to 450 megahertz. Uh, because, well, we know that this is a very good station that provides good data, so we decided to include it as well. And we are thinking in including other in this range, but for future. Okay, uh, also we need uh, validation tools to know if the results are somewhat uh, good or not. So for that, we, we have a report from uh, NOAA's SWPC, uh, Icalisto does not have reports, but they have, so you can use it. Uh, they have in the 2012 and 2019 period, so it is very useful for us. Two minutes. And also, sorry? Uh, two minutes. Okay. And also, uh, um, uh, the visual inspection, we save together the, the, the images that are in the same solar event, so they are saved together so we can easily uh, see them and see if they are actually the uh, a solar event or something else so here we have the the results uh, well uh, first i need to explain that c is the the number of events detected using the arce the arce from igalisto data and n is the events reported by by noah so here we 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 play with the th and, and k values to to see which combination is the best for us. Uh, in the third column is the number of events uh, detected using the arte with this combination, and in the fourth column we have the the events that are detected both by the arte and the NOAA reports. And finally, in the last column uh, we have the the events that are only detected by, by Callisto, but not by NOAA reports. So in my opinion, the, the rows in green are the better performing and the yellow are somewhat, somewhat good as well. 
So now I will comment uh, the results. The good news are especially about uh, false positives because only the events in in the well the seen by the ARTE but not in NOAA reports can be theoretically false positives. So using a reasonable par uh, THK, we find actually few. Uh, this is for a year worth of data and we have at most a uh, few hundreds. But additionally, if we visually inspect uh, these uh, images, we see that there are, in most cases, uh, are genuine genuine uh, bursts that are unreported by NOAA. So we have found some new uh, bursts that wasn't reported yet. Uh, and finally, uh, regarding the bad news, well, it's stated there are almost uh, 4,000 um, solar events reported, and we only find like, we, yeah, like 1,000, a bit more, depending on the configuration. Um, uh, the reason for that, well... Mario, uh, I apologize. Could you please... Um, I apologize for interrupting you. Could you please summarize the conclusions and we really need to um, move forward to the question sections. Okay, the reason for this is essentially the lack of coverage. We are very focused on Europe and, and we have... All, we lack of a station in other longitudes and the K-value. We need uh, the match of various uh, stations, so it's difficult sometimes. Okay. And finally, for future development, uh, the extension not only to 2014 but all the period uh, we want to do some statistical analysis on detected bursts we want to use the method also with non-calisto data and well um, create some services available to the community using this method so thank you for your attention <laughs> Uh, thank you for uh, the interesting presentation. So, uh, any questions, please? Okay. No. So, uh, please, the third row. Right. Hey, thanks for that. Um, a question about the um, background subtraction. How do you deal with, say, you have a 15 minute window where there's a bright type 2 burst, and then the next 15 minute window there's very little in it? Will the background subtraction be different in both, and how does that affect the results? Do you know? Yeah, the background subtraction is different for each uh, feed file. Yeah, it is. And do you think um, if you, I don't know, take some global average background that you subtract the same thing from every um, FITS file, have you tried something like that? Or Yeah, that have been tried too, actually, in the beginning. But the results we had, the images that, that yield uh, wasn't as good, in our opinion, as using this uh, background subtraction of the average. Right. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, next question. Uh, the second row left. Yes. Thank you uh, for your presentation. Uh, I have a... Uh, question about, so your model now is uh, for the detection, right? Not for the classification. So is that correct? So you're not, uh, you're not able to actually make the distinction between a type two or type three and... Uh, yeah, that's correct. Um, I'm actually eager to start just developing, using this framework, uh, developing a uh, uh, a model for classification. I think it could be possible. Yes, I, I think probably your model would be able to do more than just the detection itself. I'm pretty sure about that. So, but then if you go in this, and that's maybe a little bit related with, with what we discussed this morning, but so you have different time scales. So you could actually consider the type two, which is much longer at a different time scale. You could actually vary the time resolution because the model doesn't care really uh, about the time resolution. <laughs> so you could actually try to, to, give, to get your, your images at the same, same size but with different time scales, right? You, you mean when I start uh, the mo the developing the classification model? Yeah, right? for the classification, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I'm thinking on that. I think I agree, and I think that's the most 
difficult part because this will be the more different part from detection. So I think about this and well, I'll need to try things to, but I, I need, I, I want to try that thing, that uh, different uh, croppings in the horizontal axis. So yeah, different scales in time. Yeah, that would solve your background subtraction problem, probably. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, Thank you. Could you comment a little bit more on the architecture that you use and why did you select it? Mm, so I actually tried uh, several different architectures. Uh, efficient net also, uh, VIT, um, I think other most, well, AlexNet, obviously, because it was the previous one. And using our performance metrics, we we checked that this was the better performing. And well, yeah, you're right, there are uh, more specific uh, parameters that I can explain, such as the number of epochs, um, batch size, uh, but maybe too long for now, but but yeah, there are other more specific parameters to 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 set. Okay, okay, thanks. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Mario, for your presentation. 